Hi, welcome back to Kolsky RC. So today we're going to have a look at the SMO 4K, which is 4K 30 gram action camera made by Insta360 in collaboration with Beta FPV. So the only people that have gone to the market to actually make something for the drone flyer enthusiast out there. So you've probably seen videos of this already. So it weighs 30 grams. It's like a GoPro, a naked GoPro type thing. It comes with snow mounts out of the box, you have to print them yourself, but we'll discuss that in a minute. So in the box you get the camera itself, which is on the front of here, which I'll show you in a minute. You get a spare back in case you want to fit this thing a different way into a different mount, which I'll discuss with you in a second, because you can get different type of mounts for this with your print off. It comes with an ND16 filter, uh, ND16 filter for the sun. I'll also discuss that with you in a minute and it comes with a UV filter which is virtually a clear filter which is on the front there to protect your camera lens. You also get in the bottom, not those, they're mine but I'll discuss them with you in a minute. You get the camera connection cable which plugs into here on the camera itself and then it has four Cables on the end, a positive and negative, which is if you want to wire it straight up to a battery, which is what I've done. And then two wires that connect to your board, to a UART, so you can use this and have an on and off switch on your transmitter to turn it on and off in flight, if you want to do such a thing. It's quite complicated to do, but the instructions are in there how to do that. And there is a video, I think, floating around on YouTube of how to do it. And you get a T-slot drive. And a couple of spare screws. That's what you get in there and some instructions. The reason you get the ND filter is that this thing has jello uh, and I have tried various different ways of mounting it and I still get very slight jello. You see in the video that's coming up at the end, I dispensed with the ND filter because all it did was made it dark and didn't really help the fact of giving me any kind of improvement at all on the jello. So you are going to get slight jello even with the mounts i've tried various different ways so how i've mounted mine is i have a got one here so this is a 3s balance adapter cable i actually bought a set of five from amazon which do two three four five and six s simply cut the end off this end off that goes to your battery cut the wires out the center and use the outer black and the reds and that will give you battery voltage and simply connect them up to the red and black on the cable and put some kind of covering over it and you can just then connect it into the balance lead of your battery which is what i've done here so as you can see here's my cable coming out i've used the red and black only i've chopped the others down inside here and i've just gone on to the uh, balance port there and i simply plug this into my balance port on there and then you're connected so on the camera itself it only has two switches which is an on switch and a record switch it's as simple as that all setting up is done by connecting this up through an app on your phone it connects via wi-fi you're connected up and you can adjust the settings there isn't that many settings in there but you've got your adjustment of what kind of um can't remember the word what kind of film rate you want to do do you do want to do uh, 4k 60 4k 30 there's also 2.7k and so on. I recommend doing this at 2.730 because if it does it at 2. Point, sorry, 4k30, if you use 4k60, I find the image to be too grainy, no matter what I do with it. So I wouldn't recommend going above 30 fps, which is absolutely fine anyway for what you're going to use it for. And that's all set up by that. Once you've done all that, you save it and then you simply a matter of turning it on. You'll see the little blue light come on on the back when it's turned on. And then simply a matter of pressing the button next to it, and there you go. Little icon will come on and flash to show you it's recording, and that will be in the mode you set up by connecting it to your phone. So this will keep recording. Mine set up at 4K 30, and it's as simple as that to use. This does not have any technology built into it to help with stabilization the stabilization is used by a thing called flow state which is built into the software which i'm going to show you at the end of the, before the end of the video i will show you a quick overview of studio 2020 on the pc and how you transfer your video over the video files that come out of this are mp4 unlike the 
Insta 360R, which comes out at a format that only the, only the software can recognize and you have to use the editor. You could use this raw footage straight away. The reason you use that is because you can adjust, well, you'll see at the end, but you can adjust various point of views, your field of view, you can use point of view, you can use ultra wide, you can use narrow. You'll see that at the end of the video on how you adjust that. And then you obviously can put flow state on, which the video you're going to see right at the end, which is only 50 seconds long because it's minus two degrees here. And I flew it outside my house, just a quick up and down in the air, just so you could see what the camera looked like. There is slight jello on it. It's quite a weird day. It's, when I filmed earlier, there was a bit of brightness in the air. That's because it was going to snow. It's now snowing, so it's just a grey mess outside. I'm glad I did that bit earlier. So as you can see, it's dead simple. You get no mount with it. You print off your mounts on the on a 3D printer. So this bit that goes on the back, the pivot, if you like, this pivot pin here, I have made a mistake because I printed that in TPU. And because I printed it in TPU, it won't actually tighten on to the other one. So because this is TPU as well, I'll print this in PLA and then it will tighten. It tightens with a screw and a nut that you get to go through there. And that's why you get a separate back. So you can take this back off, which has a hump in it. Yeah, I can see there. So this hump's built into it where you put the screw through. Now, if you don't want to use that, you use the separate one you got in the pack, which doesn't have that. It's just flat backed and allows you to connect it up and put a strap over the top if you want. So you can put the strap over the top of there and bring it round. But the main reason for doing that is that you can put it into a mount for a naked gopro which you can print off from thingiverse and it just slaps slots into it so instead of being mounted like that it'll be a slot type one that will go in like that which is more like your gopro types and give you a better mount i haven't printed one off yet but you're going to be seeing this camera quite a lot in videos coming up because i'll be having it rigged up on some new stuff that i've got to show you so you're going to see the camera work anyway and i'll also show you what the mount looks like when i've printed one off in one of the other videos you can actually buy the mounts, I think you can buy one off Banggood, I think it's, about, it's only about 10 quid if you want to buy your own. So that's basically the camera, so what do I think about it and why does the video say nearly perfect? Well the Jello is a disappointment to me and the fact that you can't adjust enough stuff on this camera. Sorry I'll take that back, you can adjust enough stuff on this camera and it's fantastic that Beta, uh, Beta FPV have actually made something for us, not for every, not for the mass market appeal of anybody just wanting to go stick it on the front of the push bike or whatever, it's made for FPVs. There's even a mode in there that's an FPV mode which adjusts your field of view so it's more of an FPV field of view. So the camera is being built for field of view. There's no, um, sorry, field of view, has been built for FPVs. There's no battery in here obviously and because of that you have to use it on a quad really or something that you're going to connect the battery up to and which is what keeps the weight ridiculously low. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth which are fantastic but there isn't that many camera settings and also the fact that I have got this little bit of jello and I probably can get rid of it by doing more mounts and more different things and probably be better in better weather. Low sun in the winter is no fun for cameras so it's possibly just that and the reviews I've seen which has got jello on again is being filled in winter sun which is not great but it's a fantastic addition to something like this. This is the Chimera 4 uh, as you can see it just sits so nicely on the front of that I've also got other things I want to put it on that are things that I'm going to be showing you moving forward in videos. So nice piece of kit all, all in all and I think it's well worth the money. So that's the end of the video for today. I'm going to leave you with the footage that I've recorded from my computer to show you how the software works on the PC and at the end of that it's a 50 second flight. Thanks ever so much. Have a fantastic day. This is Insta360 Studio 2020 and it's a software you're going to need to use to edit your videos as it comes from your camera to put flow state on. You can actually use the video straight away because as you can see it's a 4K video but it's also in MP4. So you could just put this straight into your video editor and make a video with it or whatever you wanted to do. But today we're going to do it. We're going to show you how to use it using this. I, I, I put it through here because I like the flow state stabilization it does. So a simple timeline down here, you can put it into here, drop your video and it will appear here. The video just drops straight in there from your card. And then on the other side here, I've got a basic settings and here I've got flow state stabilization. I've got point of view plus 
and you can see it's going to adjust these down here ultra wide wide linear narrow and FPV because the camera has no firmware inside it that allows you to do this everything's done in the editing stage which I actually really really like one thing I forgot to mention in the video itself which I remember now it does run on an SD card it's in the side I forgot to mention that and it also has a microphone built in so you can record hence why you have this Aquavision I'm not sure what it is something to do with water and you can see it's lighting up the picture and uh, you've got true audio off voice focus or action focus I've got my sound turned down let's turn the sound up I don't know if, you, I don't know if it's actually going to play through here no it won't because of what I'm doing action so it'll get the or off which will just play it naturally as it came you can also adjust the speed of your clip by using this here you can also motion blur is on at two times which is what this is so I've turned motion blur on to, motion blur on to do my video I can mark the trim here uh, forwards and backwards so I can trim that and trim the ends of the video if I wanted like you can any other any other video editor very simple to you so they're nice and easy to do this is the file as it's come out of the camera as you can see it is in 4k 30 frames a second is my preferred rate a bit rate of 96.49 and the video clip is 50 seconds long as you can see you do need a quite I'd put go for quite a decent size card because 50 seconds has took up 604 meg so a gig is, is a gig's only just going to give you a minute. So I'd go for more than a. I'd probably go for 32 gig card. I think I've got a 32 gig card in mine. Up here you could do some other stuff. You can clear the speed settings if you reset them, which I had done. So that's cleared everything there. I could go to my trim start, so my endpoints. So as you can see, it's playing now with a sound on. And this is so. If you watch a video now, let's play the video so you can see it in the frame here. And this is with flow state turned on. So if I turn flow state off, you're going to see the difference. It's quite a large difference between turning it on and off. So the window is excellent. You can see a lot by using the window. Let's just get rid of the noise. It's a bit annoying. But you're going to get the general idea of what you can do with the software. It's very easy to use. Simply hit the button up here and it will allow you to export it. You can change your resolution so you could make this 1080p and go down from 4k I could change my bitrate to 200 from 100 the higher this bitrate the higher this will go I tend to do my bitrate at 200 it'll make the file size massive look at the estimated size your frame rate you can't adjust obviously because that's been done from when you set your camera and then you can encode it 264 265 or ProRes 422 one thing I didn't mention to you earlier is that you can if you look at this side I can take this and put it straight in to Adobe Premiere so it will go straight into Premiere Pro and allow you to edit it from there very simple to use I'm not going to do that in today's video you can color plus it which changes the color settings I do not like it so I'd leave it off or and remove grain which does actually make a difference if it's a darkish day and you're trying to film that will remove the grain from it so I hope that's been helpful I'm going to leave you with a 50 second flight which you've just seen now just so you can get a a proper view of what this camera looks like rather than looking at it on the little screen you're going to be able to tell what it does look like flow state's obviously been used when I've recorded the video I'm going to get you a general idea I said I'll have a video flight up soon with something else you're going to see some a lot of cameras as I mentioned earlier but a lot of drones but I'll have a flight footage up soon so thanks for watching have a fantastic day